The following lesson is on finding the mean, median, mode, and range of a set of integers. The first thing that we're going to look at is how to find the mean of a given set of integers. In this case, it shows the table below shows a team's game scores on four games. What you should know at this point is that mean is equal to the sum of your numbers divided by the number of numbers that you have. So in this case, what we want to do is take the four numbers that were given and add them together. After we add them together, we will divide by the number of numbers, which is four, because we have four different scores. To add the numbers, we could just add them in order. 14 plus 12 plus negative 8 plus negative 14. And if you have a calculator, it's not bad to add them in the order that you receive them. However, with a little bit of thinking, we can actually combine these numbers or add them together a little more efficiently. So let me explain. So instead of just adding 14 plus 12 plus negative 8 plus negative 14, we can rearrange these numbers. For example, 14 plus negative 14, taking the first and the last numbers together, are very quick to add together because they are opposites. And when you add opposites, you get an answer of 0. So then I've got 0 plus 12, which is, of course, 12, plus a negative 8. The result being 4, because 12 and negative 8, we subtract 12 minus 8 is 4, taking the sign of the larger number, or the positive answer. So we get 4. Now, a lot of students at this point will put 4 in as their answer, and they'll forget this last step, that we need to go ahead and divide by 4 the number of numbers. So we're going to take 4 divided by 4, which is equivalent to 1. Another way that you could have approached this problem is instead of looking for opposites, like I saw 14 and negative 14, you could have also added the positives together, which would have given you 26, and then added the negatives together, which would have given you a negative 22, and then combined the result to give you the sum of 4, just like we did. Um, we got the same result. No matter what order you add in, you should get the same result. So add the numbers in a way that you can get the answer quicker, which typically isn't just adding um, left to right. In this example, we're going to find the median of a set of numbers. So to find the median for the list of numbers given, Remember that median is equal to the middle number after we order them from least to greatest. Okay, so this is going to take a little bit of a process. And when you have both negative and positive numbers, what you want to do is make sure that you start with the smallest number which is the negative numbers and so I'm looking at all of these numbers that I have been given and the smallest number would end up being a negative 10. Okay I don't have any negatives that are um, smaller than negative 10 and um, lucky for us this one or this example the order is somewhat already ordered in um, in our table. So we have negative 10, negative 8, negative 6, negative 4, negative 2, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, oh, running out of space here, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, and 32. 
Now, when you get a question like this, make sure that you do make sure that it is in order um, from least to greatest. And sometimes we end up with duplicates in there. Um, so make sure you choose if there are two fours that you write both fours. Don't just skip any um, duplicates. Make sure you write all of them because each number counts um, equally. And then after you have arranged the order, what you want to do is count off to find the middle. So in this case, let's see, I'm going to start with a group of, I've got five at the, um, on the, from the negative side. One, two, three, four, five from the positive side. Let's go another five. One, two, three, four, five. And then one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so what that left is two numbers. And I need to find the middle of those two numbers. Okay, so um, you could do this, sometimes you can do this mentally. You can think what's halfway between 10 and 12, or what's in the middle of 10 and 12. And, and if you could think about it, the answer would be 11. Now, if you get numbers that have decimals in them or are further apart than just two, you may have to do a little bit of math to get the number in the middle. Okay, so to do that, you add the two middle numbers, 10 plus 12, and divide the result by 2. In this case, 10 plus 12 is 22. And if I divide that by 2, we get a result of 11. 11, then, is the median of this set of numbers. In our next example, what we're going to do is find the mode of a given set of numbers. So let's go back to our definitions. We should know that mode is equal to the number that occurs the most often. Okay, And remember, you can have no mode. Okay or you can have more than one mode. Um, so let's look at our numbers. In the set that we are given, if I kind of just mentally rearrange these numbers in my head, um, I see I have three twos. And then I look at all the other numbers, and I'd have to have three or more than three in order to have a mode that would replace two. And if I look at all those other numbers, there is no other number that occurs more often than three times. And in fact, all those other numbers almost look unique. You do have 30, which occurs twice. Okay. But because 2 occurred 3 times, which is more than just twice, then we know that the mode is simply 2. It's the one that occurs the most. If I had um, another 30 on this problem, then my mode would end up being 2 and 30, both. For our last example, what we're going to do is find the range of a set of numbers. And again, going back to our definition, a range is the highest number minus or subtract the smallest given number in a set of data. Um, in this case, your smallest number, you need to be careful. Your smallest number may actually be a negative number. And that is the case here. So if we look at all of these numbers, we want to look very, very carefully and try to find the highest. So the highest number that we have is the largest number, the most positive number that we have. And if we look carefully, what we'll see is 46. So look at all those other numbers. Kind of just mentally go through all those numbers and see if you have a number greater than 46. And we don't. 
So 46 is going to be our high. And then the lowest number, or the smallest, okay, is going to be the most negative. Okay, or if you think about it on the number line, it would be the number line that is furthest to the left. So if we look at the, um, the number that would be the furthest to left on the number line, I see a negative 99. And again, just mentally jump through each of them. Do I have anything left of that? No. So it would be negative 99. So in order to find the range, what we're going to take do is take the highest number of 46 and we're going to minus the smallest number. Now remember your smallest number is actually a negative. So you're subtracting a negative number which means that we're going to rewrite this as adding a positive number. So we get 46 plus 99. Um, mentally in my head I actually changed that 99 to 100 and that 46 to 45 Five, so the one hundred, the ninety nine, kind of borrows one from the forty six. So I know that the answer is one hundred and forty five. Okay, so your range would be one hundred and forty five. That means that you basically have like one hundred and forty five integers between forty six and negative ninety nine, or between negative ninety nine and forty six.